The aim of this session is to explore how the castles and fortresses, as impressive monuments in their own, can be reconnected with their cultural landscape in both research and in public understanding. I will deal with these questions. With the case of the Viking Age ring fortress Nonnebakken in Odense, Denmark, which for just a few years ago was almost forgotten and totally hidden away in a modern day urban environment. I will present how a focused research strategy over the last four to five years has changed the status of the fortress into a manifested research object in its own, but also as an element in a wider cultural landscape. This research strategy includes a series of initiatives to engage the public in the research process and to tell them the story of the fortress and its cultural landscape in a new way. The work on Nonnebakken is part of the project From Central Space to Urban Place, funded by the Relix Foundation, and two projects funded by the Ministry of Culture in Denmark. Nonnebakken is one of five Danish ring fortresses which were erected around 980 AD by King Harald Bluetooth. The fortresses are very similar in construction, with an outer ditch, a flat area, and a rampart. A gate is placed in each corner of the world and connected by two axial roads. In each quadrant, there are blocks of buildings. The fortresses are all presumed to be very short-lived, with a period of use of only 10 to 15 years. The fortresses are situated evenly across Denmark, especially when the Royal Power Center Yelling is taken into consideration and are part of Harald's unification of Denmark. The Ring Fortress Nonnebakken is known from older maps, written sources, excavations, and stray finds. While the other four Ring Fortresses are placed in open land, Nonnebakken is today placed in a densely built up area in the middle of the town, as you can see to the top right. As is evident from the pictures, Nonnebakken has seen some damages throughout the years. Among others, removal of parts of the rampart in 1909, as seen in the picture to the top left. Based on this, until a few years ago, the general opinion was that Nonnebakken was almost totally destroyed. This, this opinion changed when the museum in 2015, 17 and 19 had the opportunity to conduct research excavations at the site. Instead of a destroyed structure, what we found was that preservation was excellent. The dimensions of the fortress are comparable to the fortress Fürkert, with an inner and outer diameter on respectively 120 and 180 meters. In 2015, the rampart was registered. It stood in a height of approximately one meter. and have had heavy wooden facades. In the 2017 excavation of the location, uh, uh, indications of the location of the Northern Gate were found. And in March this year, we started a collaboration with LBI Art Pro from the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute in Vienna, who conducted georadar survey in the northern half of the fortress. The radar, yeah, you can see the areas here. The radar survey proved the location of the northern gate to be right, and it was thereby possible to orientate the fortress. By comparing it with the ground plan of the Fürkert forces, also a number of possible houses were found in the radar data. And a few weeks ago, we had the possibility to make a small controlled excavation where we found the post holes from the radar survey. In combination with post holes from and AMS date from earlier excavation, this means that it now seems certain that Nonnebakken has the blocks of buildings which are so characteristic of the other ring fortresses of Harald Bluetooth, except for maybe Bowring. Yeah, you can see the places where they found other houses on the geo-rater uh, data.
The excavations in 2015, 17, and 19 have, transform have transformed the status of Nanabaden from a fortress with an uncertain construction, date, and history to a position, a position as one of the ring fortresses of Harald Bluetooth. It is thereby possible to relate the fortress with a higher precision to its cultural landscape. On a local level, which you can see here, Nonebaden was situated on a promontory on the south side of the river Odenso and at the spot of the natural crossing of the river. On the northern side of the river, the city of Odense was gradually formed from the late 8th century onwards and was a regular city at latest in 980. The location in close connection to an existing city is unique among the ring fortresses. The reason for the location was to control the inland traffic of the island and to dominate the important heathen cultic center, Udinsvi, which gave name to Odense. The only locality from the period late Iron Age to early, mid early Middle Ages on the south side of the river is Nonnebagen. It seems as if the area within a semicircle with a diameter of approximately one kilometer was kept free or cleared for other activities. The purpose might be to overlook the area or a way of letting the forces stand out as an impressive feature to remind people who was in charge. Looking at Nonnebagen in original perspective, in the late Viking Age, early Middle Ages, the strategic position of Nonnebagen in relation to the historical road system is noteworthy. Noteworthy is also Nonnebagen's location far from the coast. An early assumption that it was possible to sail a larger Viking ship up the river Odense to Nonnebagen has recently been rejected. The river simply is too curved and the water level too low. In the Middle Ages, Kerting in Norm to the east of Odense was the har harbor area for Odense. Perhaps it was also the case in the Viking Age. If that is the case, we can describe a common defensive system on northeastern Funen. Besides Nonnebaden, this system might, among others, consist of the barrages in Kerting in Norm and a suggested connected naval harbor. Also, later parts of the rich location Munkebu Bagge, which has an extremely strategic position with possibility to overlook large areas of Odense Fjord and Kerting in Norm, might be part of the system. Finally, an unusually dense concentration of beacon is a characteristic of the area. But how do we synchronize these research results with the public understanding? If we first take a look at Nonnebergen, the position in and under, in, in and under a modern day city is a challenge which we try to solve via a series of initiatives. One element is that we work on the, at, that we on the work on Nonnebergen have invited the press and the public into the research process from excavation via georadar surveys to new excavations and its ongoing process with uncovering new details. To hear about these uncertainties, discussions and considerations that is part of the big puzzle which archaeology represents. Another element is a series of talks to the press, meetings with the landowners, involvement of school classes, via teaching, lectures, and so on, to create awareness and proudness of the place. And people are fascinated, and the neighbors are pride, proud of living on top of a Viking Age ring fortress. The Danish architect Erik van Dam has made a proposal for a way to disseminate the fortress on the site in full size. The proposal is based on a few, a ge, sorry, the proposal is based on the geometric form of the fortress, and is thus an, an abstract presentation of the rampart and the gates. The idea is to lay a ring of steel on top of the rampart and to raise the innermost part approximately 40 centimeters. In that way, the landowners will not be trapped behind a high vertical wall. But on the other hand, you are still able to see and imagine the dimensions and form of a rampart when looking from one corner to the next. The roads, sorry, the roads which today leads to the parking places of the area will function as an illustration of the gates. And outside the northwest north part of the fortress, the rampart will be marked in the surface of roads 
and in the schoolyard of the private school. North of the fortress, a reconstruction of the fortress with a diameter of approximately nine meter will function as a station for dissemination. If we then look at the dissemination of Nonnebarten in this cultural landscape, the challenges become even bigger than on the site itself. In a heavily built up and agricultural country, country as Denmark, the places where you can take out a whole archaeological landscape are very limited. Also, most archaeology today is lying hidden in the ground. In the dissemination of Nonnebarten, the local cultural landscape we are working on the idea to create a Viking Age route through the city, starting at the museum with the original artifacts and then going out in the city and see the localities. Nonnebarten is the largest and most important of the Viking Age localities in Odense, but actually, but actually Odense has a larger Viking Age story. The name, as I said, the name Odense derives from the place named Odinsvi, meaning the, a place for worshipping Odin in the most, uh, the most important of the Nordic gods. Odense also is the city where the last Viking Age king, Canute the Holy, see to the top right, uh, was killed in 1086. This took place in a church called St. Albans Church, which today is present as a ruin underground. But the skeleton of Canute and his brother, Benedict, are still visible in the crypt in the cathedral of Odense. To get a public awareness of the Viking Age, Viking Age route, we have in collaboration with the theater of Dystopia arranged a Viking Age horror walk through the relevant spots. And this horror walk will take place over two evening next, evenings next week. So if you are in Odense, feel free to be part of it. If we then take a look at the dissemination of the in the rich, regional cultural landscape, we have tried to focus on the stories connected with the Nanabak not, not with the Nanabak's position in a larger fortification system. This is done through two events in the From Central Space to Urban Place project. The first project focused on the signal system used via the beacons when the area were attacked from the sea. The project involved lightning of fireplaces at the original beacon localities and observations of the possibilities to look from one beacon to the next. The project involved a series of local stakeholders, and these people and the project then became part of the research project behind. The project had a deep impact in the media and many visitors. The second project focused on the importance of sailing in the Viking Age. At Kerting in Orm, the possible harbor area of Odense and Nonnebarken in the Viking Age, at that place we, a ship was made of light projected into a wall made of water. The ship was visited by approximately 12,000 people and had a very important impact at the local community, an area with some social problems. The area really were proud of their Viking Age background. To conclude, we might say that in the case of Nonnebarn, we have a double challenge, both to make the fortress itself visible and interesting for the public and also to illustrate the cultural landscape in which it was founded. But through a focused research strategy, an open approach where people are invited to participate, and by engaging people in the dissemination of the story behind and the cultural landscape that surrounds it, we have come a long way in the process, in the process of solving these challenges. Thank you.